Hello everyone, welcome to the second video of our Marine Electrical Systems 101 course. We are going to be doing a bit of a deep dive into your boat today to create a power audit. So, welcome. My name's David from Out Chasing Stars, and I'd like to invite you to sit back, relax, and let's talk boats. Last video, we covered some electricity basics, including introducing watts, watt hours, and the power formula. If you need a refresher, or those words I just mentioned sound like a foreign language, you can click up here on the pop-out banner and watch that video first. In this video, we're going to build on those concepts to do a full power audit for your boat. This is a great exercise, whether you've been living on your boat for almost eight years, or you're just starting out. It can reveal a lot about the way you live on your boat and if your electrical setup is designed to properly accommodate that lifestyle. As I explained in the first video, tracking everything in watt hours is becoming the more common method given the complexity of modern boats. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to leave a link down in the description below to the OCS Boat Power Audit Spreadsheet. I'd suggest you download it first so you can follow along as we go through this video. And as a special gift. When you open it, you'll see the actual power audit I just completed for Starry Horizons. This includes pretty much every electrical consumer we have on the boat and matches up quite closely to the total daily consumption we've been seeing this season in the Bahamas. So if your head is swirling and you don't know where to start trying to estimate your power usage, or if you don't have a boat yet, you can play around with ours. Now, if you have already done a power audit for your boat, I'd love to see what your daily consumption is and what are your large power draws. Leave a comment down below and we can help people get an idea for the range for various boats. Now, the first step for completing your own power audit is to list out all the power consumers on your boat that draw power from your batteries. And I do mean all of them, model numbers included. We've got some research to do. As I pull up the Power Audit spreadsheet, you can see that I've already filled out all the equipment for Starry Horizons. There are some things in here, like the SSB radio, that we don't actually have, but I know a lot of other boats do. So I've looked up examples that they can use to estimate if you wish. Now, for a practical note, if you need to add another line for additional equipment, uh, it's very easy. Just come over onto the row side, right click, come in, insert row, you can do above or below if you wish, and then copy a line that has equipment in or information in it uh, using command control or control C, and then paste it into the row above using again command V or control V, and then you've got another row that you can use for information. This is just uh, allows the watt hours uh, calculation to continue being properly calculated. So uh, that's how you can add rows for additional equipment if you need it for your boat. Let's go ahead and delete that line because I don't need it. Now, once we've got everything listed, it's time to go to the Google machine. You can see there's, there's a lot of equipment on Starry Horizons that we would need to look up. So this takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it. Now, in our last video, I used our Raymarine 12 inch chart plotter as an example. So let's stick with that because I wanna show you how I found that information. I'm gonna go ahead and Google Raymarine Axiom 12 chart plotter. Sure enough, the very first result, Google's pretty good at this, Raymarine Axiom 12. I'm gonna go ahead and come in here now there's a few different ways that you can do this and I will show you my preferred way. Usually uh, websites will have like a specifications. So you can come down here and take a look and um, sure enough, you can see it lists the voltage and the power consumption right here on the specifications page. However, I think it is so worth it to try to do a little bit of a deeper search and find something that says like documents and software or support, something like that and actually come in and download the manual because you never know when you're going to need the manual and you never know when you're not going to have internet. So coming in, the Raymarine is pretty good about this. They've got a lot of the manuals available. Um, I can go ahead and look 
and find all of the different uh, manuals, both for the, the software that operates this and then the installation instructions, all those things. So if you were to download that manual, you would get the exact same information that we just found, which, as I mentioned, is that the chart plotter consumes 15.48 watts. I'm going to go ahead and come back to my spreadsheet here. Find our electronics. This is the chart plotter, Axiom 12, and that consumes, we just said, 15.48 watts. See? Not so hard, right? That example was a great one because it showed us the power consumption in watts directly. But what if the spec sheet or manual only shows the amp draw? Not to worry. So for this example, I, I am going to cheat a little bit and bring up the manual I've got saved for our Reverso OP6 pump, partially to save time and partially because I know that they have got a new model out already and I don't want to do a lot more digging. So this is the technical specs. I have the manual as well, but technical specs for the Reverso OP6. If I come down here, I can see, sure enough, it lists the amp draw here in amps, 7 amps, at 12 volts. So that's not too bad. Decent amount of power usage. And as I said, not to worry. We're going to go ahead and come back into the spreadsheet. And if you notice, the upper right-hand corner, I've made it very easy for you. I have the power formula in the spreadsheet. So if you find something that has an amp draw, 7 amps, like we just said, I'm going to put in 7 amps there. It's a 12-volt system. That means it calculates that it uses 84 watts. We can go ahead, come on down. I've got this listed under here for my deck hardware. Reverso OP6 pump is going to use 84 watts. There we go. That's a good example for the amp draw and easily calculating. Shouldn't be too difficult. The last example I want to cover is for equipment that will be run through the inverter. Now remember, the purpose of this is to identify all equipment that's going to be drawing power from your batteries. If you only have things that get power when you're running on your generator or offshore power, it's not quite the purpose of this exercise. But if there is a lot of equipment these days that run through an inverter. So got to make sure we capture that as well to get a true accurate picture of just how much power we're consuming on a regular basis. Again, I'm going to cheat here a little bit because I've uh, already got the uh, data sheet pulled up for our Splendid washer dryer. Now you can see here again the technical specifications come down here electrical requirements. It runs off 120 volts. It requires 11 amps, but the maximum absorbed power is 1300 watts. It is a big power consumer. That is for the dryer. It is a vented dryer machine, so it can actually dry the clothes. But it takes a lot, a lot of power. So we're going to go and take that information and we're going to put that into the spreadsheet. But if you'll notice, down here under the inverter section, there is a add 10% for efficiency loss. What happens is when you have to power um, the AC powered equipment through the inverter, there is an energy loss. When you are powering the AC equipment, it requires more amps out of the batteries than, or more power out of the batteries than what it's actually rated for because there's that energy loss through the inverter. Roughly 10% is a good rule of thumb to try to figure out just how much extra power is required. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is come down here for the washer dryer dry cycle. We're gonna go ahead and put in a little equation. I'm gonna type in equals 1300 watts and then I'm going to do multiply that by 1.1 to take into account that energy efficient loss. So that gives us a total draw from the batteries when we are running the dryer of 1430 watts. That is quite a lot. Now, those are three good examples of how to get the watt rating for your equipment. I'm going to go ahead and hit the fast forward button and enter in the rest of the information for Starry Horizons. Up to this point, hopefully things haven't been too hard. It is just time consuming to go through and try and collect 
all the equipment that's on your boat. Though, I suppose that if you don't have a boat yet, this step could be quite tricky. But I think it is really worth the effort to make a good faith try to figure out at least what are the big ticket items you want on your boat. After that, you can use the equipment on Starry Horizons for the rest of your estimate. And like I said, there is a lot. And I didn't mention this, but I did try to go through and actually get the quantity for all the various things that we have on the boat. That plays in here now. The estimating process. Where the fun begins. I've got two columns listed here. One for how many hours you use each item while you're at anchor, and one for while you're on passage at sea. Because the boat, it really does transform quite a lot between the two. Now, we're gonna start off right here at the top and talk about the anchor tricolor light as an example of the differences. When we are at anchor, we need to have our anchor light on. So we'll say that we use that roughly 12 hours a day. Usually, it's, I mean, it's gonna vary depending on where you are in the world, how long day is, et cetera, et cetera. But for now, we'll just say 12 hours during the day when we're at anchor. When we're at sea, you don't wanna be using the anchor light. It sends the wrong signal. So at sea, that number is going to be zero. And we can see for a watt hours consumed per day at anchor, the anchor light would consume 17 watt hours, but zero while we're at sea. As a comparison, the tricolor for the masthead, that's gonna be the complete opposite. We're gonna use that zero hours while we're at anchor, but while we're at sea and under sail, we'd use that 12 hours. So um, for us, it's the exact same model. It's integrated anchor light and nav tricolor at the same time. So hence you can see it uses the same amount of power uh, depending on which function it's actually working on. Something else that's really gonna show the differences between being at anchor and at sea are the use of our electronics. So let's go ahead and come down here. Um, let's start off with the autopilot. Again, when we're at anchor, boat doesn't need to go anywhere. We're not using that at all. It's completely shut off. But when we're at sea, unless you feel like hand steering, you're gonna be using your autopilot 24 hours a day. Same thing with the hydraulic pump for autopilot, not using that while we're at anchor, but 24 hours again at sea. The instrument displays showing all of our wind information, the depth, all that stuff, don't have them on at anchor, but we have them on at sea. So on and so on and so on. You get the idea of what I'm talking about here. It's trying to figure out just how many hours you're gonna be using it every day. Now, there is a little bit of a trick to this and that's kind of what happens if you use something for less than a full hour every day. For example, the VHF radio. We're not super chatty on the radio. We don't spend hours a day talking on it, but we would use it both when we're at anchor, like in the Bahamas, but down in Georgetown, there's been a wonderful cruiser's net to listen to. And while we're at sea, if we see another boat or wanna call one of the big ships, make sure they're not gonna hit us, we'll be using it for less than an hour every day. So we need to come up with the fraction of an hour that we're using. Now, if you know the numbers run off the top of your head, it's very easy to just go ahead and put in. Say if we're gonna estimate that we're using the VHF for 15 minutes a day, that is a quarter of an hour, so that would be 0.25 of an hour. If you don't know how you're gonna be doing the fractions in your head, or if it's a little bit complicated, if you're saying, well, I'm only gonna use this for 10 minutes out of an hour, we can go ahead and do another fancy little equation and just do equals 10 minutes divided by 60 minutes in an hour, and that would get you the percentage of an hour that you're gonna be using the VHF while we're at sea. Receiving, because there is a power difference between when the VHF is receiving versus when it's transmitting. So you can go ahead and very easily do uh, less than an hour estimates for all the equipment that's needed. We should also talk quickly about how to account for the scenario where you have more than one of the same equipment. For example, our cabin fans. I've got that listed down here under cooling and on Star Horizons, we've got six of them. Now, we don't run all six at one time. It really depends on kind of where we are throughout the boat. But I would say that on average, we use two fans 
all day long. So that's a total of 48 hours worth of fans that are running. There's a couple different ways to make the spreadsheet work like this. Uh, you can go with my preference and say, okay, we have six total fans on the boat. I know that we're using a total of 48 hours worth of fans. So I need the total uh, watt hours that's being calculated off of the fans to be based off of 48 hours. In order to do that, it's gonna be a quantity times the number of hours used per day. So if I want it to be 48, I need to have eight hours on average that the six fans are being used. I know it's a little bit complicated. It's kind of the way my mind works, but if that's a little bit too much for you, the spreadsheet doesn't really care. You can very easily come over here and say, well, we just use two fans at a time, but we're using those for 24 hours. So you can go ahead and put in 24. And if you noticed the number of the watt hours per day is the exact same. So it doesn't matter which way is easiest to you, just use that and be consistent so that you can remember what you've done. Now, okay, once again, I'm gonna go ahead and hit that fast forward and fill in the spreadsheet so we can talk big picture. Now that everything's filled in, I first wanna point out the dramatic difference between power usage when you're at anchor compared to when you're at sea. As you can tell, it is quite large. Now, the power usage makes sense because when you come back up, and as I mentioned, the equipment, we use a lot more equipment at sea than we do when we're on land. So you can tell the watt hours used per day at sea for the equipment just makes up so much of the difference. Something to be cognizant of when you're at sea, your power energy requirements are gonna be way more than just when you're at anchor. The other thing you should do is play around with how many hours per day you'll use your equipment. Right now I've got things set up for a fairly normal day on the boat at anchor, but what if I need to make water? We have a Cruise RO water maker on the boat. It is 110 volts and typically we power it off of our generator. I do have the option to wire it through our inverter and I have done so in the past. We've had issues with our generator. So I can actually come in here and kind of take a look and say, all right, pretty much the high pressure pump would be powered through the inverter. Let's say we would run that for five hours. Now it also requires a boost pump on the, it is a 12 volt power boost pump. It has to be running at the same time as a high pressure pump. So we add both of those and sure enough, you can see that the additional power required to run our Cruise RO water maker, it's pretty dramatic. Now I did put up here, you know, if you wanna go ahead and kind of compare a 12 volt water maker, you can come in here and look at the same five hours and it uses 2000 watt hours as compared to the, what is that? little over 6,000 watt hours in comparison. So there is a significant power benefit for going for the more efficient 12 volt water makers if you don't have a generator. So kind of you can play around with things like this and really makes a bit of a difference for determining what kind of life you wanna have on the boat. All this information is great to have, but what does it actually mean for day-to-day -day life on a boat? That's such a great question that we're gonna use it as a topic for our next video. We'll take a look at how you can use your daily power consumption to work out just how large of a battery bank you'll need, or how much solar you want to have, or wind generation, or hydro generation. All of those factors come into play. And to make sure that you don't miss that video, be sure to click up here and subscribe to our channel. We've got lots of other videos of our adventures that you can check out while you're waiting by clicking down here. Thanks for watching everyone, and we'll see y'all another day, another bay.